indoctrinated youth. Apparently, comedian Bill Maher thinks indoctrination of American youngins is the reason for the pro-Palestine protests that have taken place across the country. This is what I see when I see kids demonstrating these progressive progressives demonstrating for Hamas, the most illiberal people in the world, that, oh good, we're going to give America its comeuppance, asshole America. This is, they kind of have been indoctrinated this way. All right. And then this feeds in with another story we've been talking about where there has been this push to shut down TikTok on the basis that it's because TikTok, TikTok is the vessel of indoctrination. Um, because there is so much pro-Palestine content on TikTok, people have drawn this connection. I would argue that because most young people <laughs> use TikTok, um, the average age of TikTok talkers, 70 percent of them are between the ages of 18 and 34. Um, not so coincidentally, uh, the ages between the ages of 13 and 34 uh, is, the, is the bracket of people who have more sympathy with uh, Palestinians than Israelis. That number has actually flipped since October 7th. It used to be that even among young people, there was more sympathy for Israel. But I would say it's not that TikTok is polluting people's minds. I think that you see on all social media accounts visions of horror coming out of the Gaza Strip that are radically changing people's position, not in favor of Hamas, as Bill Maher so dishonestly and disingenuously put it there, but in favor of simply stopping the carnage. Sure. A couple things. Um, first of all, I think the argument against TikTok that people are making is specifically that China, the Chinese, who can have influence over the app, are promoting pro-Palestinian narratives to, like, make American society more bitterly divided and internally fighting. Just, just like the Russians reminded us that racism existed, and that's why uh, Donald Trump won. All right, well, we can't, I, I can't naively shake up, the, given how pervasive the American government's efforts to manipulate the content on social media have been exposed to have been, I certainly can't discount the possibility that um, China, a, a government with far easier access to this social media app, was doing the same thing. So I think that's plausible. That said, I, I agree with you. It, it's clear that pro-Palestinian sentiment among young people is widespread among, among the left, among the activist community. Young people are more left-leaning anyway. Um, this is obviously a very important issue. I can I see that from, uh, I mean, from your enthusiasm for the subject, from Jessica Burbank, our Friday host, her enthusiasm for the subject. Um, it's clear that it, it's genuine. So I think it's naive for people like Bill Maher or others to think that if only we got rid of TikTok or only we made their algorithm transparent or something, that would cause an evaporation of, um, of uh, that would cause more support for Israel among young people. I think that's very naive. I, I, and I, I don't think it's indoctrination by TikTok. I don't think it's indoctrination at all. I mean, it's a, it's a sincerely and genuinely held belief. I am troubled by the belief, and unlike you, I, I do think there are, I mean, the activist groups on this issue, I've, as I've pointed out many times, including National Students for Justice in Palestine, do, to me, do seem, they at least endorse um, Hamas's activities on October 7th. I don't know that they endorse the organization itself. And I think there is far too much sympathy for covering for and endorsement of terrorist activity among young um, pro-Palestinian activists in America. But that's their right. Yeah, it's really incredible how so many folks like Bill Maher, like Josh Howley, who have kind of positioned themselves as not being afraid of speech, of wanting a maximalist speech approach, saying that we need to be able to have debate, have been so quick to be among the most authoritarian people in our society as they give commentary, saying that the real problem is TikTok. Josh Howley has called for a ban on TikTok specifically over what he describes as anti-Israel uh, content. I mean, can you imagine a world where, because Elon Musk has articulated his own political values and has made censorship decisions on the app uh, that are conservative in nature. Obviously, he just got back well, from this meeting with Netanyahu and said that he's going to ban the statement from the river to the sea as a, a terrorist statement. Can you imagine if the, the powers that be said, oh, we now have to ban TikTok because we don't like the idea, sorry, ban Twitter because we don't like the ideological persuasion that, uh, that uh, Elon has taken of well, late? It's a pretty uh, dramatic move. This is important, though. Josh Hawley is actually being entirely consistent. I disagree with him. But he has, for a long period of time, he is not in a, he is not a, I would say, like a free speech Republican. He has wanted to break up the tech companies since 
before he got to Congress. He is a uh, he, he's in a he's a not part of the libertarian. I mean, he's he's feuded with Rand Paul on this subject a number of times. Mm. He is part of the the NatCon right, not the libertarian right. Um, he explicitly wants to give the government more power over big companies and social media companies. He wants commissions to decide whether their speech policies are accurate. So this is nothing new from him. It's entirely consistent. He does not have the same val values that. I have on the right or whatever. We're, we're not in the same tent here, so I'm not at all surprised to hear this. It's entirely consistent with his worldview, which is one that the government should break well, up Well, I would still point out he has, he has invaded uh, in favor of free speech as he's been defending um, Donald Trump, for, for instance, over 1-6. Um, he talked about uh, free speech when uh, in the context of investigating um, some of the uh, Joe Biden corruption issues uh, in defense of the whistleblower, specific, specifically uh, calling out uh, social media but, companies censoring free speech. So I think sure, but very on tech broadly, issues, he has been the major Republican in favor of repealing Section 230, okay. which is the most anti-free speech move we could possibly That's fine. make. But he's, so. if, if you're sitting around saying things like, quote, the Biden administration systematically not accidentally tried to shut down Americans' free speech on elections, COVID, Hunter Biden, and more, and you're turning around and saying ban an entire app, I'm going to characterize that as a, a fundamental inconsistency. But I, I do take your point. And it, it is just fascinating. And Glenn Greenwald, obviously, as we discussed before, has been on top of this because he is one of the few people that has really, really been consistent, regardless of the valence of the underlying politics in these issues. And it is remarkable to see how many people are now arguing that, well, it's college's problem for indoctrinating the youth. It's TikTok's problem for indoctrinating the youth without engaging with the idea that we all once valued, that these social media companies give people an outlet to express ideas and to see journalistic content that, frankly, is not always shared honestly on mainstream channels, including, I mean, Robbie, we were sitting here the other day yesterday, and I showed you an image out of Palestine on my computer, and you kind of grimaced and were like, I don't want to look at that. But like, that is that is what the kind of imagery that people are looking at. They're looking at handfuls, armfuls, adults with armfuls of body parts of children dumping them onto a mat as they've collected them from roughage, uh, the, the, the ru uh, rubble, rather. They're looking, they're listening to videos of a 12-year-old girl calling from inside a rubble, talking about, please save my family before you save me. I'm fine. I'm fine. Get us out of here. While people stand around confused as to what to do, because again, they don't have uh, fuel to run the machinery that could lift some of the heavy rocks off of people caught in the rubble. And people are asking, this is not some big ideological conversation for many Americans. I have ideological commitments, but I'm not naive enough to think that most people feel the same way that I do about the implausibility, implausibility and frankly, lack of ethics of a two-state solution as opposed to a one equal state solution. But they are responding, I think, very viscerally and honestly, just humanely to saying we have to stop killing thousands and thousands and thousands of children and uh, having a 20 to 1 ratio by Israel's own admission between actual Hamas, Hamas targets killed and innocent civilians. But the the concern being expressed here is that social media and the algorithms of TikTok specifically is feeding them those images, but not feeding them the images of people being gunned down in their cars, civilians shot in, in the head, the music festival at, at all those places, I, which is why they're happy, which is why so many of them have taken the view that the actions on that day were, were should be celebrated and were a good thing. Yeah, I think the issue is that Israeli civilians have not been killed since October 7th. And the reason that you don't see more and more footage of Israeli civilians being killed is because they haven't been killed, thank God, in more numbers since October 7th. What you are seeing is now going on two months of a relentless onslaught of not just killing of uh, over 15,000 overwhelmingly innocent women and children and innocent men in Gaza, but you're also seeing destruction of 80% of residential housing. You're seeing people having to trek up and down as they're told to evacuate every other day to a new location with people having nowhere to stay. You're seeing five dead babies in a NICU unit that not only were left to die because the hospital was evacuated by the IDF, but were left to decompose in their cribs so that at some point wild animals started to eat at their bodies. You cannot suppress that kind of image. And the idea that that wouldn't be circulating in a viral way because it's so grotesque and core to our sense of humanity and that banning TikTok would prevent people from having a very human response to that kind of imagery, I think that's kind of naive. Sure. I find it—but again, I find it grotesque that so many of these people can't 
work up any sort of condemnation for the events of the initial terrorist attack, even as awful as what has continued to happen, and I wish it wouldn't continue to happen. I, but I think, that is the you know, that I is the concern I'll and the fear about young people. It. It's a violation of well, you're, you're condemning law it. That's great to kill innocent people. But but these the, people are not condemning uh, it. And if Israel had not st had started killing infinitely more, uh, exponentially more innocent people in the seven weeks since October 7th, I think that we would all be in a space where we could really rightly focus that's not what, on the tragedy of October 7th. And those images would be prevailing right. in the front of our mind. But that's not— But now we have 15,000 additional deaths position, to focus but on. But they're not saying what happened on October 7th was bad and then what has subsequently happened is worse than Who, what has. They're saying what happened on October 7th who's was the great. Who's though? The, the Students wait, for Justice wait, in wait Palestine. The fifth, we're, we're, we're talking about a specific— Specific poll and statistics here, Robbie. Okay, the what largest pro-Palestinian activist group on college campuses endorses the terrorist attack. What was it? What did I just read on that stat? Fifty was it? Fifty-six percent of people in the eighteen to thirty-four group support have more sympathy for Palestine than Israel. That's the number. So you can sit here and say they're radical pink-haired freaks. It's it's literally everybody's children. 18 to 34, those aren't even young people anymore. Those are middle managers at companies and people with children of their own who are expressing these kind of views. And at a certain point, Bill Maher can keep doing his old man shouts at cloud routine from, cloud routine from the front yard, but you have to reckon with the, people, the idea that people have sincerely held views, not just me and not just Jessica, but people all around the country because of what they're seeing, yes, on social media, but not because it's being pushed or altered or doctored, but because it's a real life tragedy that's being recorded, validated and observed by international observers who are also characterizing it as an ongoing genocide and ethnic cleansing. You don't think there could be, you don't, theoretically, there couldn't be manipulation by China on, on, on TikTok to, for what we're seeing in terms sure. of these images? Just like we know that there's... We, like, yeah, right. We know in the U.S. context there was manipulation for what we're well, was, seeing all the time. I was going to say that there's an active manipulation done by the Israeli press arm to put out any number of fake stories that have since been disproven. Um, we saw there's that call of Benjamin Netanyahu to Joe Biden that is on, on camera and on tape, where he promulgates a number of lies uh, about the nature of the carnage on Oct October 7th that have since been disproven. We've talked about the various um, Israeli social media accounts that have targeted American Palestinians like Gigi There have been Indeed exaggerated and claims on both sides of this conflict, for sure. We've seen the mainstream media pick up and run with, with claims of a command center underneath Al Shifa Hospital, which was abandoned, and now they've moved on to other claims that they can try to substantiate. But what ends up happening is the claim goes around the world twice before the truth is refuted. And now there's still people walking around to this day, as we know, who repeatedly put forward this idea that there were 40 beheaded babies. And again, so yes, of course, people, there's keep, media keep, manipulation, seeing, but I'm not going to— I keep to, seeing images on my social media feed of, of, of bodies, of victims, that, and then you check the community note, and it's not even an, an image from this conflict. It's from an earthquake in Syria or something from yeah, years ago. Yeah, I did ago. see that one that happens um, Israeli uh, uh, spokesperson using a, a rape from another crisis to justify So that, of course, does happen. <laughs> okay, I, the, and, I, and I've seen the pro-Palestinian people, some of whom you've cited on this show with those images that referring to them as Palestinian deaths from Israel that are not but, happening But let's here. just be clear, Robbie. Do you think that 15,000 people haven't died in Gaza? I think 15,000 people have died. So what, what is the contention here? That they're— No, you're that, saying you're, you're making it seem, you're characterizing it as if the only inaccuracies are coming from well, one side of this conflict, no, which is not true. I, I'm not saying that the well, only inaccuracies— the, the way you talk about this gives the impression that that's what you well, think. Well, let me tell you this. The only accuracy— And then I say there are also inaccuracies on the other side, and then you start saying, so you th don't think 15,000 people died? No, because they're not equivalent. They're the scale and the, the— They're not equivalent because— That's what we're discussing, is the scale of it being it's, altered it's by not, social media. No, that is the— no, because at the end of the day, no one's quibbling with the fact that 1,000, approximately 1,000 Israelis were killed on October 7th. There can only be that quantity of imagery from those 1,000 people. And Haaretz and other Israeli papers have drilled down on that information, have done the hard work of reporting the, the exact scale and scope of that tragedy, and have found that despite there being claims repeated by the President of the United States and the, pre the Prime Minister of Israel that 40 babies were beheaded, that tragically, indeed— but, but one baby was killed. That's not one what that article said. You're wrong about that. That I, was corrected I, in USA wrong. Today. They said the Twitter wrong. accounts citing that article. Haaretz said, they tweeted, people making this claim based on this article are, are inaccurate. Jackson Hinkle, that's what he got in trouble for. I don't, I don't know anything about Jackson Hinkle or any of that. 
All I know— USA Today debunked the idea, and Haaretz put out a tweet saying people are mischaracterizing this no, article. The article—there are a number of children who died, tragically, on October 7th. Yes. But in terms and of And some infants, of them are missing their heads. All right. It, I think what is particularly gruesome is that, as we've spoken in this conversation, who knows how many more Palestinians have died? But they have died. And there is, it seems like there is no amount of acknowledgement of the tragedy of October 7 that can get some people to recognize that we might be sincerely invested in doing anything possible to stop child death, child death, child death happening as we speak in Gaza with 200 pound American bombs that we are sending to a country who gets more national security welfare money from the United States of America than any other country in the world, despite being one of the wealthiest countries in the world with the highest standard of living. That's the issue. I have no interest in d d diminishing the horror of October 7th for the innocent people who were attacked in, in a contradiction of vi uh, a violation of, of international law. But I'm not going to, as a genocide is unfolding, continue to focus disproportionately on those lives when there is an opportunity and a news value in covering the ongoing carnage. That's the issue. And that's what's happening on t Twitter and TikTok and every other website is new images, new images, new images of an unfolding horror. And that is not at all a detraction from the, the innocent lives that were lost on October 7th. It just isn't. What is a detraction from the contemporary lives that are being lost is having to both sides 50-50 every conversation about the loss of life. Because it is not 50-50, and it hasn't been 50-50 since about one day after October 7th. There, but there was, there's not even, there was celebration of it. You're right, there wasn't both sides of it. There was endorsement of it. And that's what I find so appalling about the state of the activist left on college campuses. This isn't a conversation about Well, it was a conversation about what young people think yeah, on this issue. Young people, I, I hate to break it to you, but most 34-year-olds are not in college. The most, again, the most active group <laughs> on this issue takes that position. Black Lives Matter the took this position. The most active group. The Democratic Socialists took this position. Do you think the people who That's are— a, That act, politically active young people endorse Hamas. Do you, do you think the people who are leading Jewish, uh, Jewish Voice for Peace— are 18-year-olds on college I ca I campuses? I called out specific groups, and I said what they— Do you think that the people they, who organized I, Not In Our Name and, and JVP doing these enormous events in Grand Central Station were, were well, college, I haven't, I haven't college said kids? Any, well, look, I've, I've talked to those groups. I've interviewed them on my show. I've talked to them about their strategy. I've talked to them about their beliefs and their faith and what leads them to want to do this kind of activism. And I implore everyone else to do the same and listen to them from their horse's mouth. Because right now, as we talk also, our own Congress is trying to say that their Jewish activism is anti-Semitism because anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. That's the most recent resolution they're trying to pass. And they're trying to—people like Josh Halley are trying to ban TikTok. And they're trying to—they they have done. They've banned SJP from these Florida schools. Ron DeSantis did that. And there's an authoritarian program against people who have different kinds of beliefs across the world. So if your focus is that somebody somewhere in the wake of October 7th said something that you think unfairly and wrongly endorses the murder of civilians, you have that right. But I'm sorry, I cannot, cannot stay in that space while so much else is going on. I just cannot. We can't. I don't want to just call out, but I, do, I, I feel like I do call out um, statements that are made by Israeli officials that I don't support. I don't support a lot of what they're doing. I don't support giving them mon money regardless. But we we have to also acknowledge mischaracterizations that occur. I, I see as I see them on my feed all the time. The mischaracterizations I, I from be, the pro Palestinian side. I'll be honest side. with you about this, uh, about this, Robbie. The reason why it kind of, like, if I'm really honest, it rings hollow if it only tends to come up. Your your articulated frustration, I'm not talking about what's in your heart and soul, but your articulated frustration with these things tends to come up as a response to me bringing up that there's been some, some miscarriage of media or censorship or something like that. And if I only speak out against um, a mass murder, an ethnic cleansing, um, these kinds of tragedies, when someone else bring, puts it in front of my face and I was like, well, do you, can, it's like, it's like, it, it just it feels empty. I don't know. It feels like, is this something that you're really focused on, motivated by, by prioritizing? Because I know that you'll, on your own, bring up something that happened on a college campus. On your own, you obviously have an urge to want to talk about 
how offensive that is to your sensibility. And the impression is that you one cannot help but get, take away the impression that your sensibility is more affected by the idea of an 18 year old on a college campus saying, I think Hamas are freedom fighters, than the images of 15,000 people in the confirmed reporting from international organizations and the death toll of 15,000 people, the overwhelming majority of whom are innocent, having their lives lost with the complicity of our government. I don't think it would be fair for anyone to take away from what I have to say that there's like a lack of sympathy for the deaths of the Palestinians, given how many times do I have to say that I don't want to fund what they're doing, I wish they would not do what they're doing, um, I don't think there's any hope for this situation to stop, given that Israel has total support for doing this, their government wants to do it, and, the, and Hamas wants a fight and has no intention of surrendering or, or ending this conflict, and the people of Palestinian, to the extent they have any political will, essentially support violence against Israel. So there's going to be this battle, and it's going to happen, and it's terrible to watch, and I wish it wouldn't. I wish they would accept some kind of Western, liberal democracy, multi-state, whatever solution. I hope everyone can get their own state. I'm, I'm, I'm for individual freedom and not being in tr uh, you know, trod over or oppressed. That's just totally naive, given what the two sides in the conflict actually want. Yeah, well, there's, there's an absence of, even if you think that something is unlikely or even futile um, because of the state of the world and public opinion in various parts of the world. I'm just explaining to you what I think the observation is. Statements of what you think would be morally correct is what's missing. Okay, I think it'd be morally and, and correct for— But wait a minute. I, I got to say, that I do sometimes think that the libertarian perspective, which focuses so specifically on what is getting funded— does a really neat in round of in run around ever having ever having to take a position on what, what what kind of justice requires? And when we're talking about an international law framework, it's not just about well, America's not funding it anymore, so who cares? We're members of an international community. Whether or not you think those those organizations do a good job or not, the International Court of Justice, the UN, whatever it is, have a responsibility to make those kind of determinations about the ethics and morals of the world we want to live in, not just should everybody stop funding something. And I and I do think that's part of why there's this dissonance. Well, the, I mean, the, it, it's very easy to affirm that ideally what should happen is the Israelis should stop bothering the Palestinians and the Palestinians should stop bothering the Israelis. Well, but stop, they want to bother, bother each but other. Let's, let's, but deeper, Robbie, like, is it not the case that the people of Gaza have been living under an occupation for 75 years since the Nakba in 1948, and that um, the people in the West Bank have also been living under apartheid conditions, hundreds of whom have been killed or captured by uh, Israel since October 7th started, even though they have nothing to do with Hamas and are ruled by a completely different uh, political authority. Well, <laughs> is that that is that, that is part a of the, part of the picture for sure? Right. And so it's, it's not bad just conditions, stop bothering. But it's not okay. But it's, yes, but it's also, released from prison. But the group they put in charge of their area is a terrorist group that has engaged in violence against the people in Israel, which then justifies, or in their own, in the minds of Israel and the Israeli government, what they're doing. So it's a it's right? a blood feud that will go. Well, it's not right on either side. They should just stop fighting with Wait. each other. So and so Israel should release Palestinians from apartheid. They should for sure, and the Palestinians should okay, and not, they should be allowed. And Hamas should surrender, and there should be no more violence. And, and Arab and Palestinians should have equal rights within Israel, and not be and not be subject to checkpoints. And they should have freedom to egress and to vote and to all of the things that people in these occupied yes, territories don't on have condition that they to. stop engaging in violence against the Israelis. Right. Like the, the, the if I is hit you and then you hit me and then I hit you and then you hit me and we went on like this for a thousand years, eventually we'd say we should just stop doing this. Right, but what's missing from that? It wouldn't matter who did it first. It, it wouldn't matter it, who did it, it more does, bloodily. It does matter. Well, then we but, disagree. But Robbie, it does matter because in your scenario, what if I locked you in a cage in my basement and then you hit me and I'm like, oh my God, I get to bomb Robbie in his cage. That's the scenario we're talking about here. But what if you locked me in a cage because you feared for your life because I threw a rocket at you? What are you talking about? There were Palestinians living in, in the area in 1948, living their mind in a pluralistic right. You, you want to adjudicate this conflict forever. I just want it to end, but I know it's not going to because the people there want to fight, want to fight it as militantly as you and the left do. So we'll they have. So we'll watch. Free, Robbie, people just don't want to live in an occupation. Well, they don't. They can want what they want. What they're getting is death by the thousands, and I find it so disgusting. I wish Hamas had not done this, 
And that so would not have just, caused the deaths of thousands so of people. Keep I am horrified by the de- so they no, could keep living in apartheid. This will just it, celebrate violent, Rocky, feudal violent resistance that gets thousands of of children and women killed Robbie, did is you, not you something know? I can celebrate. Even if I thought the cause was a great one, Robbie, I wouldn't advise that. Robbie, do you know that hundreds of Palestinians were killed every year? Hundreds of Palestinians had been killed in Gaza prior to October 7th this year by the idea. Well, now we'll bring up the, 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 however, the dozens that just died since we started having this conversation that did not have to die if this escalation of hostilities oh, did minute. not take place. I'm talking about before October 7th. You're saying that it's also Palestinians' fault for just living their lives up until October 7th, for getting sniped off by the IDF. The I Great March of Return in 2018. Ho- was it? Was it? They, they tried to never peacefully protest. It's just protest, Palestinians' fault. But they tried to peacefully protest by just walking next to the wall and saying, "We want to end the liberation." And for weeks, Palestinians sniped and shot and killed those peaceful Isra- protesters. Israel, Israel, Sorry, Israelis Israel. Israel sniped and shot and killed those protesters so much so that there's a whole like class of people who have below the waist amputations because of the behavior of the IDF when they tried these other ways. I, I'm not in a position to adjudicate every dispute between these two peoples and these two regions. And I don't care. I wish the violence would end. I would be happy to reach any re- any reasonable or even unreasonable solution for political rights so there's not further violence. That's what I want and that's what I care about. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be the case for the reasons I've discussed. But I, I, have the, I share the same goals you do. I, it just We seem to be revolted by somewhat different things. Yes. I'm revolted by the fact that 214 Palestinians, including 46 children, were killed in the Great March of Return, and 36,000, including nearly 8,800 children, were injured <sighs> by Israel as they tried to peacefully agitate now, what, what for their is, liberation. And then I can say all of the people that were injured by Palestine, and then you can say, oh, but there were more injured by Israel. Israel did this. And then it's just, it's not, it's a, it, the conversation goes nowhere. But we share the same goal. I don't so think we what share can the we do? To- goal. <laughs> but it's okay. Right. We'll leave it there. Uh, stick around. We'll have a rising for you right after this.